Yo, yo, yo. What's going on? Switches. I don't appreciate that they had me as Jonathan. Not much, man. So we got a guest on the show today. He's, you in, he's in the waiting room about to pop off. Got our boy Anthony Augustine. Yeah, I'm hoping that my internet just holds on. Just hold on for 45 minutes, man. 45 minutes is all I'm asking. Yeah, man, <laughs> I've, I've known Ant for, I think, I want to go almost 12, 13 years. We served in the Army together. Uh, actually had an awesome experience that we'll talk about on the show he had a house because uh, at the time he was married and went to and I started recording some beats. He did beats and I started recording some uh, some freestyle poetry in his uh, in his closet when he was start okay. first starting out. He's also the person that created the beats that you hear all throughout this podcast. Uh, he's one of my closest friends, man. Have a, always have a good time talking shit with him, and he's gonna tell us all about what he does and making beats, man. All right, brother, hit that intro, and you're about to hear his music right here. All right, here we go. Bow, 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 bow. Yo, what are you doing right now? The big V. Look, man. All right, man. Let's just jump right into this shit. <laughs> so, uh, I made my wife so wake good. up and drive me there anyway. <laughs> you a major? What's that going, so? Okay, What's that going, going on? ¿Qué pasó, papá? ¿Cómo estás? <laughs> Any questions? Now, when you bought that sweater, right? You just go, fuck it. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going full Mr. Rogers. You've tuned into the Match at a Podcast. Oh, yeah, man. So here we go. Anthony's going to be joining us here in three, two, bam. What's up, man? What it do? What it do? What's good, man? Chill man. Shit, man, bro, I was I was thinking about uh those those beats that you made back in the day, and I just like did like a random freestyle. I think it was like five or six songs that I just went through. You remember that? Yeah, uh, the the I think he was doing like poetry. It was like a yeah, like a freestyle yeah, yeah. poetry flow thing he was doing, man. And I had I had like the the uh the bed. What 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 you got? It just the uh, the bed padding in the in the little closet for some <laughs> sound reinforcement. Yes, <laughs> yes. the memory the phone. Had, had, yeah, uh, the memory XLR phone. Son. It was running down the hallway, man. It was so <laughs> ghetto, yo. But I mean, we yep. made it work. Yeah, those were yeah. good times, um, man. We made it work, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Definitely, man. So how you been, man? I've been good. I've been good. Um, working a lot. Married, kids. House, family, you know, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Still working on the music. Never stopped doing yes, that. Um, I'm into uh, mm -hmm. gaming, live streaming. I do a little bit of everything. Um, with the music, I recently released uh, five albums, two singles. Um, trying to get into video game music. I've been talking to a lot of indie uh, game developers and everything, trying to get some music out there. Very difficult, by the way. But I'm getting closer and closer. Every, every month I'm getting closer and closer to getting something on some some game that hopefully mm -hmm. it blows up and take off. But um, that's what I've been up to, man. Just out there making music. These are copyright free music for people, you know, that do podcasting, uh, gaming, Twitch, uh, YouTubers, and things like that. So yeah, man, been busy, really busy out here. That's that's a whole lot. Jeez, John, you got yeah. a question? No, nah, man, he's got his plate formed. Yeah. He was, he was like, "Oh, I, I don't know what." He, yeah, he was like, "Yo, I don't know what we're gonna talk about." He just rattled off like forty-seven things that he does that we <laughs> well, have a know, podcast before, about. Each before one. the show, he's like, "Man, it's gonna take a lot for me to talk for an hour or for forty-five minutes." Man, man, he had like he four or five me. topics. Not, back in the military days, man, I wasn't much of a talker. I was just kind of that that guy that was just yeah, around, yeah. you know, till you get me mm -hmm. into something. But other than that, man, I'm just kind of laid back, chill kind of guy. You know, yep. taking it easy. Are you sure that you weren't a talker? Because if you're spending your time with Ben, like you don't get a chance to talk. So you can't really find out if you're a talker yeah, or not. Maybe, maybe, maybe I was trying <laughs> to, man, but I just, you know, he was taking over. <laughs> he was that Dude, man. I do, I that, do that shit. <laughs> hey, hey, man, you remember, uh, where, I'm hoping you were there. There's this funny story, John. We were at, we were cleaning uh, weapons after after the range, right? And oh, Lord, we had, I already we know. had a... <laughs> an NCO, we had an NCO that had uh, that lost a finger in in in, our, in Iraq, right? Uh -huh. And we had another E6. It was an E5 and an E6. It was the funniest moment I've ever witnessed. Ant knows exactly what I'm talking about. 
he go and the, S, the the E five, the E five was this big dude, right? Huge dude, and the e, the Small E six was little dude from New York, yeah, from from Brooklyn, and they were talking shit to each other. He's like, "Nah, son, you can't whoop my ass." What you mean? I'm like a hundred pounds heavier than you. Like, nah, man, you need all ten fingers to whoop my ass. Trust, <laughs> I've <I'm> never. <laughs> <laughs> he had nothing else to say after like, that. It's like he had it nothing. Was the, uh, which finger? It was the ring finger, right? <laughs> yeah. just... oh, man. <laughs> the ring finger, yeah, yeah, the ring. Yeah, I think it was the same, the same one that tried to no, make us. Was... Uh, Bro, he cleared water. <laughs> I don't know if you was there for that. Yeah, had us take the boom. Yes, by the yes, it was. Yes, it was. We ain't gonna say his name. Damn. Uh, no, but he. I. I think I was there, but. He wasn't quick on his feet. Yeah, he always did dumb shit. He when if, if when he was around, he always did dumb shit. He was never always around. That's why I was like the de facto leader of the squad because I was I was the highest ranking E four. So I just kind of always I was always in charge. So when he came around, I was like, "Yo, man, what you doing here? Get out of here!" I always said, "I don't know what to do." <laughs> yeah, I was always that bully, one hundred percent. Always that bully. Didn't matter my rank. But yeah, man. Uh, so how you how do you go about? The, how do you go about uh, reaching out to these indie uh, video game uh, production companies to to get your music into it? Great segue, Ben. <laughs> like, a, I have that's that's a tough one. Um, so recently, I've, I've I've been getting really heavy on Twitter. Um, it seems like a mm-hmm. lot, the majority of the devs um, are using Twitter. Like they all know each other. You know, you got the verified users and everything. Mm-hmm. So you know, you're talking directly to them. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, a lot of them use discords, you know, to keep in touch with their fans and, you know, people that play their games and everything. So, you know, I get an invite into their discord. I kind of hang out, get to know people a little bit and then kind of mm-hmm. let them know what I do. But like, hey, you know, I, I make this and I make that and I got this out, you know, and, you know, take a listen, you know, listen to it. You got anything else in development right now? Any alphas, any betas or anything like mm-hmm. that? You got music for it? I just kind of trying to ease my way in there, you know trying to get something out there but that's what i'm doing man um twitter has actually helped me out a lot i used to hate twitter um yeah. but now it's like that's you know how everyone's on wake up in the morning they jump on facebook and me is twitter i jump on twitter and see what's going on um yeah you get a lot of good information out of twitter yeah i was sure. i've been following like for a while now business slash entrepreneurial twitter um Got a lot of stuff. I mean, the influencers and, and, and the verified folks, though, they're they're selling their own courses and classes and stuff like that. But there are a lot of people that just put out information for free. Could easily right. make it into a class that, that people charge $500 for or whatever. Um, that's helped me, like, on some of these side businesses and how to set things up. Uh, so I know, like you said, you used to hate Twitter probably because if you go on Twitter, a lot of people would just go straight to like the political stuff or they'll go to like just the negative stuff and you can get caught up just like you get caught up in uh, Facebook comments. Twitter is the same thing. I mean, you, you'd be there 30 minutes later. You're like, what? Where did I just spend my time on reading yeah, all this hate? hate. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. They go back and forth, man. Just like any other social media. So you got, you know, you got the positive people, you got people to try to educate you. Then you, everywhere you go, you're going to have those negative people that's going to mm-hmm. you know, go back and forth. And you, you next, you know, 30 minutes later, you, you're you still scrolling, reading the whole conversation. You should, <laughs> really shouldn't have. But right. I, I feel you there. Exactly how it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Twitter's definitely been something that I've uh, I've, I've gone into more lately. Like I'm, I'm, I'm more on like on podcast Twitter. We're just a bunch of podcasters that follow each other. And one like there's this new podcast I started listening to today called the the Tennis Podcast that I recommended to John and I'm, I'll send it to you on it's on Spotify where like these two guys where they just talk about like a uh, random top ten list where like one guy brings in the podcast and w- one guy brings in the list and the other guy has to guess what's on the list like the one I listened to was like recreational drugs like what's the top ten list of most uh drug uh the drug top ten drug users and it was interesting because there's like, two guys just talking shit so it was like just seeing that. And like the the creativity of it, you know what I mean. Like it's Twitter is can be crazy if you go into that dark hole of it, but Twitter is also what you make it because all I see is like podcasters like supporting and uplifting each other, and, and creatives like, oh, what do you use for your podcast or what do you use for your uh, streaming service or different things? So you l- learn a lot about that stuff. Like I know you two had told me about Discord, then I see other people talking about Discord. I was like, oh, so I guess I should the Discord. 
Is that is that thing where like I probably need to hear things like three times to get things to pop? Like I know you had told me about like uh Discord and there's but there's certain limitations living where I live where I'm like, oh man, is it like another live stream thing where like I don't know if I could to like manage it? Cause there's there's a lot of uh yeah, like I said, limitations to what I can do living in uh in the eighteen hundreds, which as you know isn't very beneficial to anybody of color. Just just leave leave it at that. You won't catch me at that. No. <laughs> Yeah, Look, no. uh, yeah, in no, like three crazy, years, yeah. ben, Ben's gonna hear about uh, Clubhouse. Like three years from now, they already heard yeah. about Clubhouse. My wife, what Clubhouse? What? Yeah, that's, yeah, she got that's that right. Young invitation. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. an Android. I'm user, not exactly. So. I'm still not exactly sure what it is. Me I know too. it's like. Yeah, Android all Android all day. Android gang up in here. Got but you. John, you got you got a question. Well, I, you I jumped you so forth. quickly. You jumped so quickly into how do you reach out to these indie gamers? But I mean, we were talking about before the show, um, you know, and, and we talked about it when the show started. How you guys met and you're doing the beach. Like, what got you into that whole that that whole path, right? Because I mean, mm-hmm. a lot of people have a love for music, but you are you're creating. Like, I mean, you love music, I'm sure, but you're 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 doing more than just listening and taking it in. And and keeping up with the culture, like you're actually creating music. So, like, what got you into that? Um, I would say way back in like middle school, high school days. You know, I was that guy that I wasn't into like hip hop. I mean, I loved the music, but I wasn't like a freestyler or you know a lyricist or nothing like that. I was that guy that was in the classroom that was beating on the desk, and then everyone else you know, start, you know, jumping in and everything. I was, I felt like I was kind of like the hype man. And then when I finally got into, you know, some cheap, you know, some free program that you download back in Windows 95 or something and, uh-huh. and, uh, and started <laughs> making loops. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, and I kind of went from there, you know, and, it, you know, the name, everyone used to come to my house and right. I just start making music or whatever, play it, they freestyle to it, like, and I just kept it going from there and just start building and building. And I just just started loving it, man. Okay. And, and so for so what for like your day job Sorry, or something in you do something related for your day job? Like are you working audio engineering or A V stuff like that, right? Uh yeah. Um you could say that it's uh yes, I'm in A V right now and there's a lot of um there's a lot of recording of audio and video, a lot of uh, editing videos, um, live streams. There's a lot of um, equipment set up, things like that. So, yeah, I'm still um, getting audio and editing audio and, and things like that. I'm not really creating like right. the music. Um, still going to try and get some of my music out there, of course, you know. But then again, that's where I, where I work at. But that's a lot of what I do, um, more of the back end of uh, like anywhere that you work at, you know, you got the the C-level, um, have meetings with other companies and things. I'm that guy that makes sure those those meetings go well, the video cut, uh, conferencing, okay. um, everything that's uploaded onto, um, like we use Panopto, basically a storage for all the edited videos, classes, courses. Everything that's edited on there is make sure it's on there, sounds good, look good, and viewable for the for everybody. Tough job, but very easy at the same time. Okay. Like as soon as you get used to, <laughs> yeah. As soon as you get used to the software, it becomes easy. But like the initial understanding of what the software is, I'm sure has to be like difficult, right? Right. Um, once you get used to one program. Um, the rest will come easy. Just like, you know, you use this for your live stream. And if, if I introduce you to something else, you're going to see this, a lot of similarities. They all work very much the same, you know? So if you're using mm-hmm. Pro Tools or if you're using FL Studio or if you're using Logic to create music, you could jump from one to the other. It's going to be a lot of similarities. So you're not going to be too lost, you know? And okay. a lot of the learning I do is push this button and see what happens. Turn this knob and see what happened. And that's how I learn a lot of the, you know, a lot of technology these days. You gotta do what you gotta do, man. When you get something new and your bosses say, hey, I gotta make sure this works. I'm like, I got it. I got you. Don't worry. 
And uh, yeah, I'm, I start pushing buttons off to the side and I just want to make sure every, <laughs> whatever it does, I'm, make sure it works. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how that's how I figured out a lot of this like podcasting stuff and like figuring out like editing. Like I use Audacity to like sometimes edit our podcast when like I say too much of a wild stuff or or I got to go back and try to like fix the the lag between our conversations. So I go in there and edit it. And yeah, it was just like watching videos and yeah, clicking stuff like oh let's see what this does. Oh, enhance does this or or equalization does this and just figuring it out that way. But exactly. uh, yeah, man. So dude, you've been you've been making beats since like middle school. And is there, was there like a moment besides like the Windows 95 use? Was there a moment you were like, yeah, I want to do this forever. Like this, creating this makes me like spark something in, in, in me where like, I, I definitely want to do this forever. Um, I would say like, first I started off with, you know, hip hop music. And then like, there, there was a time where, I really didn't want to deal with hip hop anymore. And you know what it was? It was like the artist that I was dealing with. Um, very mm. difficult, you know, kind of, you kind of, I started losing motivation. Um, and then I kind of started moving into other genres. And then that's, that's what like really opened up to all oh, there's so many genres out there that you could work with. And, and I started developing a style of like mixing genres together, like mixing like hip hop and techno or like rock and something like that you know and i'm taking a bunch of samples from mm -hmm. everything and mixing this and that's when i realized man like no matter what like you know you don't just stick to one genre like this there's always going to be an endless opportunity to to make any kind of music for someone to love man and and like the the responses the comments the reactions from people when i when i put music out there that's what really keeps me going you know and someone listened to something like you know i made the intro for you guys um reggaeton you know mm -hmm. i didn't i wasn't making reggaeton like that you right. know but from listening for so long you know I, I mean i made some in the past but working on it i was really enjoying making it you know what i mean but then when i sent it to you and you were like yo oh my god like you know that's just mm -hmm. motivate me to keep mm -hmm. on creating because that's man. You know, when i feel that love man i'm just going to keep it going you know what i mean for sure that, yeah, I mean, dude, I listened. I made that that intro, that instrument, that instrumental is my ringtone, man. Like that's when somebody calls me, like that's that's what plays. And every and every time, like you'll see me off camera when I play the intro with like us with us doing like a little clicks and sound bites of the pod. Like I'm, I'm dancing. I'm still vibing to it because this it's just it hits, man. And like yo, I was and doing knowing, the same thing. I think what hits harder is like is knowing you, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it hits harder because, like, yo, I know who made this beat. Like, that's my boy, man. Like, we served yeah. together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we stayed cool this whole time. Right there. I was like, that's what makes it hit harder. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I appreciate All right, John, that what you say? Though. Yeah, I man. A hundred percent. I always come to you. Off? Well, because you, it's, it felt like I needed to do it. You know what I mean? It just felt right. <laughs> I told well, you I that you're it. you negatively impact you negatively impact uh my my eyes. All right, go ahead, John. What you got, brother? So, I mean, you're uh, you're you're pursuing the, the the music for for the love of it. Obviously, you want to get your music out there. You're you're, you're talking about uh, you've reached out to some of these indie game developers, uh, but you've released some of your own stuff already. Now, are you are you because uh, you're doing it for the love of it? But are you looking to make some income out of it as well? Right? Oh, of course. So are you, and I mean, there's nothing wrong with like, I, like I can't sit there and say, I don't, I'm yeah. going to do it for free. I mean, yeah, you do it for the love, you do it for the passion, but yes, you want some, you want something out of it, you know, you, that monetary value, man. You, <laughs> right. Yeah. You're making, you're creating all this stuff and it's great that people love it, but you, you want to, you're like, okay, let me get paid for it. If, if you like it so much. So it makes sense. Are you, have you, have you been able to make some, uh, like uh, an income off of making some of these singles and the albums that you've released? Uh, yes. Um, it's there. My music has been distributed all over, um, Spotify, Apple music, um, Amazon, Napster, like, uh, title. So, you know, you get money, you get money back per stream, which is very, right. very small amount per play. But mm -hmm. it's it's been uh it's been booming in the last year. So yeah, I've definitely been seeing some back. Also, um, you know, like in iTunes, Apple Store, 
also Amazon as well. Um, there's been a lot of purchases as uh, also. That was su surprising. Um, seeing people actually buy the albums or buy like each track, Tracks, you know, yeah. or you know, for their own personal use. I was surprised to see that, but um, yeah, definitely seeing some income from it. That's that's the beauty of technology, right? And eventually Ben will catch up and he'll know what technology is. But that's the beauty, <laughs> right? Like you oh. don't need a you don't need a big distributor uh, or a distribution deal or get signed to someone. Like you can just be like, I I I have this creativity, I have the skill to create this, and you can go and do it yourself. I mean, have you had someone do all this stuff for you, or you just do it yourself, or you just get up and set it up and and load it up on these different platforms? Um, so I use DistroKid. Um, they um, that company actually, um, you can select where you want to distribute it, how you want to uh, distribute it. And so I just been using them, but basically it's pretty much all on my own. Um, album from album covers. Uh, I may reach out to some artists out there to create something for me and, you know, pay them or the last few albums. I just make it myself and, you know, Photoshop self taught by the way, you know, if I just mm -hmm. really want to get like a single out there and I just, I create uh, the album cover myself and, get it distributed so yeah yeah i mean like uh, all by myself i you, you're talking about using the different like the different softwares and i bought two years ago a year and a half ago we we bought um like a little mini amp a focus right scarlet i2 or so my son he likes to sing he's he didn't get the talent from me that's obvious no, <laughs> but he not. can he can sing he can play the, the the piano he learned to play by ear plays the cello and so I was like, all right, well, you want to start recording all this stuff, putting it up on YouTube, Instagram, let's do it. Got him a mic, got him uh, the, the little mini mini amps. He can hook up his keyboard, hook up his mic. And then it comes with like Ableton Live or other, you know, uh, right. digital audio workstations that you can find. And I was just like, what is this? Because it's just like, it's it's all digital. Whatever soundboard you would have in a studio, but it's all there on screen right. for you. And I'm like, mm -hmm. what? I, what am I looking at right now? And so it's just <laughs> learning by doing, going to Reddit, it, going to it's, forums. It's like a grid. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. You don't know where to click. You don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's like a, I don't know, some type of big puzzle that you're trying to put together. And, and everything is the same color in, in these new programs, man. So I, I definitely feel where you're coming from there. But that's that's cool. Um, Yeah. All he needs to do is keep recording and keep putting his music out there. You know, uh, word of mouth is the best. Um, mm -hmm. they, you know, that's out there, you know, tell a friend to tell a friend, tell a friend, family members and everything that's going to tell everybody next thing you know, he's going to have some plays out there. It's, you know, if he's good, he's going to get discovered. Hey, that's you know? the best multi-level marketing. Don't do any multi-level marketing except for your own own stuff where you're like, hey, I got this, I got these beats, I got this music, I got this podcast. Then you go door to door to friends and family and be like, hey, tell a friend and, and do that. Yep. But don't come send me some knives from Cutco. I try to do that shit in high school. <laughs> so I know. <laughs> I hated it. <laughs> uh, herbal life out here. Um, right? Yeah, no, nah, man. Definitely like getting it out there. It is it is that beauty in being uh, your own creator and your own content, right? Because you, you're able to dictate everything you do. You don't have somebody because well, when we grew up, this what none of this stuff was available, right? Like being able to, you yourself put out your own content, you, you had to like get lucky and get a record deal or or an exclusivity or a 360 deal and things like that that, you know, was so rare. Now you're able with social media and, you know, like you're saying like distro kid, I think it was that you said that puts yes. the content out there for you or you or for us is like creating your RSS, RSS feed that that puts the stuff out to, to all the platforms now you're able to grow and see like monetary value and and people uh listening or appreciating your music that you never come across right so that door to door is worldwide now like yep. i was going through our analytics john and we had people in like uh england uh germany Fil you know what i'm saying the philippines and all over the world it's like yo how the how they even hear about me like how they hear about us and like, and you see all these people like, yo, that's dope. Like, I don't, even, I didn't even care that it was like three or four people, right? But it was just like these people randomly found us and they listened. Like, that's dope. So that door to door is worldwide, and it's it's a beautiful thing. You know what I mean? And somebody that you never known or heard of bought your beats. That's 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 fucking great, man. Yeah, um, it's not even a question. Yeah, I'm just stating. Amazing. 
<laughs> that is amazing, though. And yeah, someone on the other side of the world listening to you and, and you know, possibly subscribing and just looking forward to your next yeah. content. I'm just like, wow, you know, I don't, yeah. I don't even know if they speak English. Yes. Or, you know? <laughs> just, but they're, they, you know, exactly. they're, 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 you know, they, they love what they see. That's, you know, that's dope. Yeah, because I mean, we really are. That's, that's crazy, man. What was that thing? The six degrees of Kevin Bacon, <laughs> six degrees of separation. Yes. Um, but yeah. it's true. Like some, I remember someone, uh, a friend of mine, um, and you know how Facebook gives you suggested friends, and I'm like, how? Why would they suggest this person? I don't know who this person is. Right. So I started doing mm -hmm. some like Facebook stalking, and <laughs> they have is their fault for having their profile public, and I went back, started <laughs> looking at their stuff, and I'm like, it's just crazy, like. Two or three friends later, like I realized, oh, that's why they're recommending him because he knows this person who knows that person who lives in Washington, who this other guy lives in Cali. We were stationed uh, in Cali together and bam, we know each other. And then it turns out that like we both went to Florida State together. And then I ended up actually running into that same person in California uh, at a bar or something. And he was getting married. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. And I mean, we don't we don't keep in touch, but like I, I ran into him and it's just funny how that works. Like you really are connected because you know someone who knows someone and and we're not that really that far apart that's that's dope man um maybe i should stop ignoring those uh suggested <laughs> friends <laughs> i, 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 I didn't add them but i'm just it was just a it was a funny coincidence <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he, he had this like, whole story on like oh i didn't know <laughs> Well, because yeah, you know, uh, hey, hey, Google on. and Facebook, they know everything, right? They got location service, you got right. location services on. So yep. we start talking to this person, and now all of a sudden your phones are close to each other, and it's like, hey, you may know this person. And I'm like, how? I just yeah. we just ran each into each other at the bar and we happened to be at Florida State, but then I did the digging, I'm like, Jesus, we like we have a friend in common, or we have friends in common, one, two layers down the line. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, crazy man. Skynet so, one, but, bro. Right. Yes, got it. One. I mean, that's why they kicked me yeah. out of my my studio, my studio from the year twenty one seventy five. Let's, let's not back. talk about. Let's not talk about it too much because there's this is the best uh, quality of, I've seen so far of the podcast we've done. So let's just keep it positive. So Skynet, I apologize, and let's just keep yeah. this moving freely and slowly. All right, button. John, what were you gonna say? So, <laughs> yeah. so I'm a young, I'm a young. If I'm a young fifteen year old, like high school sophomore, and I want to follow in your footsteps. Like I, I just now started making beats. I started learning some of these, like uh, these, like digital, these DAWs, and I started messing with them. Uh, maybe making loops. Um, like maybe I want to, like I want to do it for more than just a hobby. Like what steps do I take? Who do I reach out to? How do I reach out to them? Like how did you? How did did you like uh, your path kind of go? How what, what path would we follow? And everyone's different, but like how did you do it? Um, well, a lot of the programs, like you said earlier, um, there's a lot of classes and things like that, that you can access without paying anything. You jump on YouTube and say, how do I make a major chord? You could just jump on YouTube and just uh, search that. And somebody out there is, is telling you how, you know, mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of research, um, you know, to help you with your learning. Um, if you already start developing music. Uh, one big advice I have is don't delete your work. You know, um, you're going to make a lot of music that mm. you're going to hate. It's going to sound like crap to you, you know, but it's going to be somebody out there that really loves it. Or, you know, you could just, you know, give it a break, come back to it and you continue working on it again. Like one of my like biggest songs, um, actually, I mean, this, this track has, and like it just hit like like fifteen twenty thousand like hits like, and and it's steady my number one track is uh, some recent game called Among Us. I started working on like remixing it, just making like a beat out of it. And yeah. man, I I felt like I was going nowhere with it for the longest. So I'm like, how am I gonna make this this little cheap game like something something dope? But you know, I never deleted it. So when one day went back to it, and I'm just like, okay, I was going somewhere. And, and then now it's my number one song right now. Um, so, like, never give up on, like, your tracks. You're going to be your, your, your own worst critic. Just, just keep going. Um, do your research. You know, experiment. Don't stick to one genre. Like, I can keep going. Yeah. But, you know, you know, try to be different. Don't try to be like everybody else. That's, that's what I try to do, you know. 
you know, uh, people come to me and say, hey, make me a TIB. And then, you know, make me a Luda beater, you know, something like that. And I'm, I, my response back to him is like, you know, I make ant house beats. So, right. you know, if you like what you hear, then, I, you know, I'm going to create something different for you, you know, and, you know, you work your magic to it. But I'm not going to go out there and copy anybody or try to get this guy's sound, that guy's sound. I mean, I mm-hmm. can if I want to, you know, if he's just high in demand, but I'd rather not. I'd rather start have, having your own sound. And so someone could say, hey, yo, can you make an a house beat? Can you can you make it like him? That's that's what I'm aiming for. You know what I mean? So um, I already ran off subject, but there's a lot of advice right there <laughs> to help out somebody that's new. You know, um, first of all, never give up, man. Yeah, yeah no, you're right. No. Go ahead. So that's when well, like when we reached out to you. Cause like I was like, yo man, I got I got a home I got a homie that's a that, that's a producer. I was like, I already know who I'm going to, you know what I mean? Cause like we we've already worked together, right? Like when we did, I think when we did the recordings at your at your house, like I think you were just like trying to see like how it sounded. It was more like a sound check, right? So we we're trying to see like how it all how it all sounded, how it was all set up. So where I was like, I already know who I'm going to. So when I was like, yo, like make your beat, you know what I mean? Like, this is all I had, like, yo, whatever you go with us, like has like a Spanish vibe, reggaeton thing. And whatever you do is what you do. Like, I already know, I already know your work is quality. You know what I mean? I already know it's going to be top notch. So it was very easy for me to go about it. That's why like I, anytime, anytime anybody like on, on Twitter, on like, on my, especially like for pods, because pods is like a, it's still, yeah, it's booming. Cause almost everybody has a pod, but like not everybody goes about it the same way. And everybody like there's horror pods, there's uh true crime story pods that you know what I mean. Like I was telling John, like there's some pods that like they use a beat throughout the whole podcast. You know what I mean? They just use it on a loop, they give it like a different kind of death and stuff like that. I was like, yo, man, I got the perfect if you guys ever need somebody, this is the perfect person. Cause you don't because I'm already a pod that's established, right? Mine and me and John. And it was like to put it out there, like this is it's, it's already word of mouth where I'm like, yo, this is quality stuff, man. And he'll and he'll work with you, and he'll make something that's content specific to you. So yeah, you don't want to sound like anybody else. You don't want a Luda or a Tib. You, but that's I think the reason why people do that is because they're they're established already, so they just want to like come off the coattails of that as opposed to making their own lane. Which is why I always like give you a shout out because yeah, you could you could do like the Fiverr stuff, you know what I mean, and stuff like that. But you want I go with somebody that I know and trust because like I know he's gonna give me something. That's that's Ben and John. You know what I mean? It's gonna be specific to the pod or to the game or stuff like that. Exactly. You're, you're absolutely right, man. Um, you know what I mean? Hey, you gotta be original. You know, you, you don't want to be like everybody else because you know the the original people out there is that's what, what's going to stand out. You know, if somebody's looking for a podcast and you know they pull up this guy and it's like, okay, he mm-hmm. sound like the last guy. He put up this guy and it's like it's the same thing. And then they put up you guys. Like, okay, what's what's going on here? You know, it's, mm-hmm. you know, they looking for something different. You know, that's what I look for. You know, if I if I'm watching like a yeah. live stream, I look for a different person. You know, something that's doing something totally different. I'm like, okay, I like this guy. Let me let me see what's going on here. So, you know, yeah, you think like the audience. Yeah, it's not more of the same. So, Ben mentioned yeah, exactly. um, Ben mentioned uh, Fiverr. So, is that have you used? those platforms to like put yourself out there to offer your services, to, to like create music for people with like pe- podcasters, people that are looking at, that they have to create a website that are putting together some kind of video for a client, maybe marketing or any, anything related. Have you used stuff like Fiverr and uh, Upwork and all these places? Have you heard of I, them? I have heard of Fiverr. Um, okay. I have scrolled through there a few times. I have not purchased anything, but I, I've never used it, never uploaded anything on there. Um, honestly, I don't even know where to start uh, when it comes to music. Do you load samples or anything? But I have, haven't messed with it at all. Oh, honest. so you haven't, you haven't put it on there, like not, a, not as, a, as a buyer, but as a vendor. You haven't used it to offer your services? No. It, it's a blessing and a curse, right? Because like that's the name of the website. You can find something for $5, but you're going to get what you pay for. Right. And mm-hmm. there are people that have... Like they have a tier for five dollars, ten dollars, and then tears. they start. Yeah, then they okay. start charging three hundred, five hundred, eight hundred, whatever for different packages. Yep. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, there, unfortunately, there are some people that have very, really low tiers, uh, five dollars, ten, fifteen, and maybe they'll give you great work. But you, as a creator, if you were doing that, it's like you would you probably get nonstop work, especially once once people see the quality of your work. But you would just wouldn't be able to you wouldn't be able yeah, to breathe. It, it yeah, would just be strictly be volume. volume. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And then you you know when you're in this kind of business, you don't want to se uh, sell yourself short. You know. Um especially the amount of time it takes to create something right it, you know you don't want to be like okay five dollars and that's, that's it you know like like any career yeah. you know you want to you want to aim big you always want to aim big or go home <laughs> yeah i don't i don't i don't know how much i don't know how much ben paid you for that for that intro that we have there uh, but thousand. that but that's definitely not a five dollar <laughs> no. intro and, and people will, like someone that listens to this will be like no, 30 seconds, like, uh, how hard can that be? But, again, he didn't really give you a – like, he gave you very, very minimal direction, right? It's like, hey, give it some, like, maybe, like, hip-hop, reggaeton, Spanish beat, and then he gave you the clips of us talking. But then you did all the creative stuff and then all the, the, the technical stuff of putting it together and creating the beat. I mean, that that's not right. a $5 piece of work. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Um, yeah. It's – creation is it's tough. Um, just like writers, producers, uh, the same way you can hit writer's block or, you know, yeah. a music block and you just sit in there and you don't know where to go. Um, but yeah, just a little bit of direction like that, man, that's, that's really all you need. Um, you don't want too much, you know, and then it's like, yeah. then you trying to create everything that they tell you, then it's, it's going to be really tough, but you know, right. you just give them just a little bit information like, this is what I'm looking for. Uh, I'll see you later, you know? Like, all right, I got what I need. Mm -hmm. I got my ammo. So I'm, you know, that's that's all I need. Yeah, you don't want you don't want somebody to stifle uh your creativity when right. that's what you do. Like I like I couldn't mm -hmm. tell you like I know I'm at look like, at some more guitar here, you know, because I'm not the pre I don't I wouldn't me giving you that kind of direction, just me specifically, right? Because then it was like I I don't know what would go good with that guitar. It was like, oh, but then if you had this, I might not, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, I already know what like I said, like I already know what you do. And how you go about it, and how how uh, dedicated you are to to your craft. So I was like, I'm not because I don't like people telling me right like how to go about what I do. You know what I'm saying, or, or how I talk. So I was like, I don't, I wouldn't want to tell somebody that. Like, and then again, it goes back to like what John said. I don't know if he said it on the pod or before. I was like, I don't understand how I was I was in the military because like I was constantly told <laughs> what to do and what like how to act. So <laughs> like with authority, I was like, how the fuck I survived there without getting in trouble is beyond me. But you don't want, like, as, as a producer, you don't want somebody, and as a content creator, you don't want somebody to tell you exactly how you go about it, because then, like, then why don't you just do it yourself? If you know exactly, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm the, let me be, give me my creative license to, to go about it how I think it should go, because I'm the one that has that vision. And you're trusting me with, uh, with finances, so let me handle it. Right. That's, that's where the, the, the stress factor will come in, you know, when you get too much direction, too many orders. And now you now you just lost, you know, trying to trying to satisfy somebody like in the military. <laughs> you don't want yeah. too many orders. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I'm 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 surprised I'm surprised Ben didn't give you direction and tell you to put more guitars hmm. because if anything <laughs> look <More> cowbell. <laughs> honest, honestly, because you know what? This I had to introduce it. I had to introduce this dude to music soul child. I had to introduce him to tp2.com. Oh, Whoa. Before that, he was probably okay. listening All to right. John Mayer. You know what I'm saying? Like he was like, "Yeah, let me get that John Mayer oh, guitar whoa, in there." Son, I know. So no, no, no. I'm surprised he'd be like, "Hey, no, no. Let, let me let me get some of that little your body is in Wonderland in there." <laughs> you can't be talking about the same bitch. person now. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. He he. I will say that he. I know he looks like a small white man, but he did put me onto TB2.com. Uh, I know he looks like every MAGA person you've ever seen, but uh, uh, he uh, he did put me onto TB2.com. <laughs> he did. He did put me no, on the right? But music, <laughs> but music, soul child, but music, soul child was something I was already on. Thank you, John. Uh, but John, like, like, nah, that was a different person when I went into the army. Like, we we put we put each other onto man. God damn, John, I've known you for twenty five years. That's that's, yeah. that's so crazy. Uh, but yeah, man. Yeah. So when when you get like, what do you do when you do have that one client, right? That is very specific do you go like nah man you're gonna have to find somebody else do you like do you, you reserve that right to like fire that client or 
like, all right, I'll try to work with you, but if it, or what do you do? I, I just tell them straight up. Um, this is how I create my music. Um, I'm trying to get it, you know, as close to what you're looking for, but it's going to be a hundred percent my style. You know, it's not going to be like, I, I literally just told somebody that like, uh, like a couple of weeks ago, you know, this is how I'm going to do it, but it's going to sound like me. All right. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, it was, a it was this chick. She, she, um, she's a, she's a video game streamer, but she had like, oh, okay. This is weird. All right. So she, <laughs> so when you, when you're streaming, right. Let's say, it's for like, example, you get a, he's like self editing. Yo, that's just crazy. <laughs> you get goes, a, you get oh, this is weird. <laughs> Right. And then you get a you have an alert like a sound effect, and she has like the rugrat sound. Oh yeah. Right. So she okay. said she was she was very specific. Like I, I need you to use like the rugrat sounds, like you know the you know the theme song. I want you to take that. Mm-hmm. And there was also a, a track by some group or some some girl. I can't remember. It was like way back in the nineties or something that came out with the uh, the rugrats movie soundtrack. Can't remember. Oh, but anyway. Uh... She she yeah, gave it me was that Black example. Street. I think it was Black Street. I I think so. I, I, think, I so. think so. I would yeah, Black Street and like Janet on. Jackson or some shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. But she John, gave me a, Google, like a sample. You, use that. your internet, John. <laughs> you don't want to lose them. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and she told me like it needs to be like this and like that. And I'm like, you really can't recreate that without it sounding like their track. And I don't want it to sound like their track. So I yeah. told her, hey, I'm gonna have some some of the sounds which i i did i did some research to see what kind of synthesizers they use and things like that so that's like maybe the only similarity you know what i mean um that right. instrument other than that it was all me and uh and so I, I sent her a little sample and i was like hey this is this is what it is she loved it go ahead finish it send me the full thing i'm like all right there you go you know and sometimes you just got to be straightforward with them if they don't like it, then they'll go find somebody else. But if they, you know, you know, if they they want to make sure they keep you, you know, as a producer, you know, mm-hmm. they'll deal with it, and they're gonna love it. Yeah, no, I make sure of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because what what happens what happens with people wanting something like the Rugrat sound or something like that is you also got to be careful because you could run into like copyright issues and then it gets taken down exactly. and stuff like that. So you never, like, I remember before I hit you up to like, yo man, I need a, a intro, like a countdown and an outro beat. Right. And I ended up using, and then I'm using those. Cause like I will, I initially use Canva cause they give you like samples, but it's not copyright. It's not free music. So then it, like that podcast got taken. And I was like, all right, I'm not doing that again. Let me hit my boy up. I already, I already have my producer. Like I'm never going to anybody else. I was like, let me hit my boy Ann up and have him work on something and then, you know what I'm saying, go from there because I know it can't get taken down for copyright issues or anything like that. So then when you own the content and you have some, it's personally created, you don't have to worry about stuff like that. Like, people don't think about that, right? Like, because if something sounds similar, there's been plenty of lawsuits and shit like that that happen yeah. because something like a sample gets taken. No matter, like that, uh, matter how Thick, uh, Robin Thick beat. Yeah, Robin Thick got destroyed by Marvin Gaye. Because yep. of his song with uh with Ti, because of that shit. Yeah, I remember that. Um, yeah, no. yeah, YouTube, YouTube will catch it really fast, you know. YouTube, man, Facebook, yes. you know, you throw it up there, probably like five minutes later they hit you up. Hey, copyright infringement, you know, at whatever, mm-hmm. and you know that's like the main thing that I tell people when I'm like, you know, doing a little advertising here on whatever social media. I just my sentence, I just tell them, hey copyright free music this is yours you know that i make for you you don't mm-hmm. get dmca strikes or anything like that it's free for you to use you know with no worries you know you go ahead take the music and you you, you make whatever creation you want but you ain't gotta worry about one day some some producer or somebody out that's gonna come out there and get you you know once you start to blow up you know you don't have to worry about that so that's the Word. main thing that i tell people you know before i start making any music for anybody absolutely what you got, John? Well, so, so like this this streamer that you um that you were making this making this for, how did you how did you guys link up? Did you you just reach out to her on Twitter or I mean um, she heard about you and she reached out to you? Yeah, that's what happened on Twitter. Every once in a while, just I just throw messages out there. Um I got I got a tweet that's pinned on my my profile. Yeah. 
Um, this has a few samples of some tracks that I made, you know, with that same message, copyright free music, no DMCA strikes. So every once in a while I'll, I'll post and say, Hey, uh, commission is open, you know, hit me up if you want some music. And she, she, uh, DM me like right away, like, yo, I was waiting for you to say something, you know, like you could hit me up anytime, but when you see it, that refreshes, <laughs> you know, they get that refresher in their mind. Like, Oh yeah, that's right. He, he makes music. And I was looking for something and you know, that's how we got the uh, project started, man. I, I, so I, I, everyone in my family or my wife's family or whatever, they're all creative except me. Now I used to, you know, I, I used to write a lot and I, I, I don't write as much as I used to anymore, but, um, like I have a niece, I've told Ben about this. I think she she must have like 40, she had over 30,000 Instagram followers. Like she went from 13 within the last year and a half to like she's over 30, probably over 40 by now. Uh, she the does one a lot of like uh, the anime, right? Anime, yeah. Like she, yeah. I mean, she's really talented. And so she does the same thing, right? Every once in a while, she'll be like, commissions open. But when she started this whole thing, she was um, like not sure how to price it. She didn't want to overprice. And I'm like, look, what you're doing is is incredible and you might and some of like she started developing her own characters but so, a lot of the stuff she was doing was just like other characters like i guess people would call it fan art she would just take characters yeah. from other stuff but create her own thing using those characters but it's a, a completely unique thing that she's making she's just using already existing characters and uh but people are reaching out to her and so like i i initially helped build a website she's using a, a different website now she's going straight through instagram but I said, hey, don't don't undervalue yourself or undersell yourself just because, oh, it's one thing. Like, mm -hmm. And it might be easy to you. It might take you an hour to create this piece of art. Like, I, She showed me on, on her iPad how she goes through it. And I forget what, what software she uses, what app she uses. But I mean, she like zooms into like the pixel. You know what I mean? Pixel level oh, to, yeah. to make this the stuff. Shadings all, and yeah. yeah. And then she zooms in, zooms out to create all the shadings and, and get everything just right. And I'm like, no, nah, you can't sell that for 15 bucks. Like, even if it took you 40 mm -hmm. minutes to create this amazing piece of work, like that's that's someone's reaching out to you for this original piece of work. And you're not going to make that for anyone else. And that's theirs. You you have to you right. have to yeah. uh you have to value yourself. Like, don't feel bad. Yeah, I get it. You're at the time she was like 13. Like you're 13, 12, 13. No, like this is what this is worth. Don't feel bad about pricing it that way or telling people, hey, this is what my commissions are. So how do you as someone like how does someone young, how do they go about that if they don't have someone telling them? Maybe I'm, I wasn't in the industry, but I just knew because I just immediately started doing research and trying to find out like what the how she should price things. How, what do you tell someone who's 15, like that same college so or high school sophomore and they want to reach out to someone? How do they price? uh an intro for someone or sound effects for someone because i know what you're talking about like they're streaming on twitch and they want their donations or their chats or whatever to have right. a specific sound how, how does someone price something like that where they're not underselling themselves but they're not uh like you know price I'll, gouging I'll pricing or, or themselves. I'll pricing themselves yeah. yeah what you need is a good starting point um researching other artists that's out there that's successfully selling you know, that's kind of similar to your style. You want to go out there and, and, and look and see, like, how much are they charging? You know, and is that, is that comfortable for you? You know, say if somebody is selling a piece of artwork for $75, you know, depending on the size, you know, 75 on, you know, on average, and then they go up if you want something bigger, you know, or a little lower if they want, if you want something small, you know, whatever dimensions that you're looking for. Right. I would say do some research, see what's booming out there. And like you, you become a customer for a little bit and just pricing out there. And then you take that average and say, okay, I'm going to start like right here. You know, um, that'll be the easiest way to go about it. Cause you already know what people are expecting to pay for, um, in the market for something good quality like yours. So you can take that, you could, you could start there, go a little higher if you want to, you know, but that's, that'll be a good start point, you know, and then once you start like really selling you could always, you know, make adjustments, you know, go up a little bit higher, you know, if you start getting more clientele, um, more regulars just want to keep coming back, you know, you might want to keep them at their set price, but the new, new ones coming, you know, mm -hmm. until you, you build that website and then you have those set prices, you know, you, you know, while you out there, you, you have the power to, you know, make any changes necessary depending on your workflow.
Okay. So I, I'm gonna, you complete the fifth on this next question, by the way. <laughs> so and I always look at things from like the business perspective and marketing and, and comp looking at, at competition, like you said. So on on Twitter or Instagram or whatever social platform works for you, do you actually follow, I'll say your competition, like other producers and reach out to them and, 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 and you know, be like, hey, I, 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 I have a stream or have this and I'm looking for this piece of work to... Uh, I need a I need a track for for my podcast, like Ben said, you know, some some mystery podcast or thriller podcast. So I need a track to loop throughout, and and it needs to be like thirty seconds long, and I'm gonna loop that the, the entire podcast. Do you actually reach out to competition to find out what they're charging so you can get get a better idea of how um, to set your I, prices? I've never done that, but I have um, gone into other like live streams or check out websites. Um, even have joined a few discords of other, you know, bigger producers than, than I am, you know, just to see how they're like, you know, how they're running things, you know, how they're talking to their, their customers and who, right. how they talk to their fans yeah, how they or, are, you know, yeah. um, I, there's so much things that I, I research, like, you know, if I want to put up, uh, like a, a video on Reddit or, you know, on, uh, Instagram or on Twitter, uh, you, you know, there's this certain times of the day where a lot of people will check, you know, like like 7 p.m. in the evening will be the perfect time to post something. Yeah. Um, like Or like, uh, I think it's like uh, 11, 12, you know, in the afternoon, it's the perfect time to post something because yeah. that's the majority of the people are looking, you know, they I, they go by stats and everything. But um, I, I like I said, I have been on uh, certain websites and streams, you know. And I have engaged in, you know, conversations, not nothing to do with pricing or anything, you know, just just seeing what kind of people they are and how they, you know, and how they do with the uh, other people, you know, following them. So, OK, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and you're, you're obviously that's you're big on your on, on like interact. Like you, that's that's a big thing with social media. You want to be able to interact mm -hmm. like uh, just genuinely with 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 the people that are following you. But. Anyone listening, you know, if you if you're selling something, if you're thinking about creating a Facebook ad, even if you're a producer, like follow those producers, follow those people that have that sell the same stuff at you. You can it's there's an easy way to spy on on Facebook. There's an easy way to spy on Facebook ads, and just reach out to them. And be like, hey, I'm trying to to have this beat created, right? Or I need to buy this, or, or I need this service. Like, how much does it cost? And then that way you can figure out how to price your service against the competition. The market, like, see the market. Like, yeah, yeah, see the market. See what the market is. But also, the actual but also what, what, yeah, what Al was saying makes sense because uh, what you want, like a lot of times if you're an independent creator, like, Ant, you know what I mean? Like we are here, like you yeah. want to, you want to see how the, the other creators go about it and how they engage with their fans yeah. or, or potential customers, because you don't want, like if, let's say if Ant was a dick, right? And I, and like, I didn't know him like, oh, he makes good beats, but yeah, he's kind of a shitty person. You know what I mean? Like how they how they approach their fans and stuff yeah. like that. Because I'm in, I'm still at that time. I'm also still investing in that person, right? Like yeah, I might be getting a beat, but I was like, all right. Like I remember the person, the first person who made uh my logo, right? When it was just me. When it, like it was good, but like the back and forth wasn't exactly what I wanted it to be. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. So I was like, all right, I'm not. I'll, I'll take this and I'll and I'll pay some amount of money because I already like agreed to it. But I was like, all right, I'm not doing that again. You know what I mean? So like, it's a lesson learned. Sometimes you have, sometimes you have to take a. My dog, can you can you hear my dog? Sometimes you have to take a. Look, I had to, I messaged yeah, my I wife because I thought that was our dogs. I have earbuds in, so I don't know if it's coming from like my door. And I'm like, like he's like, it's no, not no, our it's dogs. Dog. <laughs> yeah, it's the little doorstop that he keeps playing with that he thinks is like a little punching bag here in the room. But uh, not nah, yet. Yeah, you you invest in the person. So like, if somebody, if I don't have a good interaction with somebody that I'm that I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like a uh, pain, you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm either one, I'll never use that person again, but like, what's up? so that's why I always make sure to, to know who I'm investing in is worth it. Right. Like I'll check out other, but like John said, I'll check out other podcasts. Like, okay, this is what they're doing. This is, you know what I mean? Like not necessarily the monetization of it, but okay, this is how they go about their, their software, their interaction, their posting right. and stuff like that. So I'm still learning that because I'm still, I'm still learning Twitter, right? Like, because Twitter was a dark place on the on the other end. But, like, now I'm still learning, all right, this is how I need to go about it. This is how often I need to tweet. Like, when Ant tweets something out, I retweet it. I, you know I mean, constantly show love to other podcasts and other content creators just because, like, that's what's being, that's happening to me or to us. 
So that's the one thing you have to be uh not you, not any of us, but like if you're listening in to general, this, yeah. like be careful how yeah, in general, like engage the engagement and the familiarization with potential customers or followers or anything like that. You have to be smart about that because every interaction could be a customer and could be money, or you or you never know that right person that like blows it up like yo man, I'll give you a million dollars for this beat right now. Or yeah. yo, this this podcast great. Would you like to be part of our studio? And you know what I'm saying? We'll pay you all this money. So you just never know. Absolutely. When the right I, one hits. It's very easy to get turned off, you know, to, to someone that you're spending your money with, you know, and they're they turn out to be like some type of asshole, you yeah. know. It's it's like, okay, like, do I really yeah. want to continue spending money with this guy? And then, like you said, it's many times before it's word of mouth too. So if I have a bad experience with you, and then I see somebody else, you know, getting in contact with with this guy. And I'm like, yo, man, and then I talked to him. He was a straight ass. Like, don't even waste your time with him, you know? And this is just going to ruin business. Yep. So if you if you have a good, you know, relationship with everybody that comes your way, they, they're going to spread that same love to everybody else. But like, yeah, man, I work with Ant, man. He was, yeah, he's a cool ass, cool ass guy. And he made a good beat, you know? And, you know, that yep. person may be like, okay, well, let me go holler at him to see what he could do for me. You know, that's that good word of mouth, man. 100. You got to keep that good relationship with everybody you can. Yeah, I mean, the, the terms change, Absolutely. right? Like social media, you might call it social media engagement, but at the end of the day, it's the customer service. It's the same thing. Yes. Um, and you treat people a certain way. They might pay for your product at one time, but they won't be returning customers. Uh, you know, you might lose a follower. You might lose a, a potential customer. So, I mean, yeah, I, I hear you. Ben finally got on the, you know, he finally got on the, on the bandwagon getting on Twitter I said, look, man, it's easy. Just don't post any crazy rants and ignore all that stuff and just Facts. focus on the Facts. on the positive stuff. Facts. I, Facts. 100%. Yeah. He's my mentor. He's my mentor <laughs> right there, that little guy. I got to listen, man. Hey, man, uh, before we get you, yeah, I got to listen. It takes me a while. To, I'm very stubborn sometimes. But it takes, like, I'll, I'll work on I got to work through it. You got to remember, my, I'm in dial-up internet, so it takes me a lot longer to load the information than everybody else. <laughs> but uh, before we get you up out of here, man, uh, I know we talked about it earlier. You want to throw some beats up and uh, and I mean, have us vibe out to it. Whatever you want to throw up, man, I, you know where you with it. Uh, sure. Um, see, ya. you should be able to share a screen from there. If you, you see the option, no. Yes, I do. Should be in the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I <see> as I <laughs> look on the screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got, I got multiple screens here. Um, I'm going ben doesn't look like a bastard. <laughs> no, I don't know shit about that. I, I got, I got a fucking 1999 Acer laptop and shit over here. Oh, oh lord, <laughs> <laughs> lord, I don't know how you do it. Yeah, man. Okay, so this is this is the track it's, I was a... talking about. Um, that kind of blew up. You know what I mean? Um, so let me go ahead and share screen don't show these tips again sure share the audio bum, bum, bum. yep got it multiple okay, screen, multiple be... screens must be so nice john right. you got that on your end you know i don't want to touch there anything go. look at that oh shit look that looks, oh, that's that looks complicated, fire. right what are you using what is that uh, yeah that's fl studio Okay. Uh, you may have heard of that. Yeah, I have. Okay. Yeah. So that this looks is like the... a big ass win app to me. <laughs> I remember Winamp, that. I remember, 1998. I remember that. Like, I used to use win app. <laughs> I used to love the visuals. <laughs> yeah, man. The visuals are great, yo. Can you hear that? Let me know if I need to turn it down. Sounds good. good? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yo. Uh. Yo. The sick. <laughs> so 
So yeah, when I tell you, I took a long time working on this. Like, you know, just from from nothing to something. Oh, for, for, let me let y'all hear this. Hey. Hey. But yeah, this is one of the beats that I was like ready to give up on. You know what I mean? Turn out to be my number one track right now. On everything. <laughs> on Apple, on YouTube, on Spotify. It's the number one track. You said this was from Among Us? Yeah, Among Us. Yeah, that game blew up. My my son, I, I played it a couple times. They were trying to get me to play it. Oh, wow. Yeah, my, my son was uh, very into it too. Going to turn it down. Yeah, I mean I, that helps, right? Like, so you did you make this for the game, or you just kind of took something from the game and sampled it? Look, um, so I I took a lot of samples from the game. Uh -huh. Um, uh, for example, um, like this sound right here. It's how can I how should I explain this? If you played the game when you start. It makes a little sound. Do dum dum dum. Mm -hmm. I sampled that one note, and I started playing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's how I came up with the uh, like with this pattern right here. Oh. So that's you know what I mean? Yeah. That's that sound right there. So that's sampled directly from the game. Okay, so the reason why this blew up is Twitter. All right, so mm -hmm. I was working on this. I started following the the, the game devs for that game, yeah. right? And then one day, um, I already released this track, and it was already getting a, in a lot of plays, but it wasn't like crazy. But I tagged him one day on Twitter, and I was like, "Hey, is it possible to get this track on your game? Like, you know, in the main menu or, you know, some type of background music credits or something. Mm -hmm. And so many people was like, yes, do it, do it. Like it was just, and then they finally responded. It was just like, you know, we're not in a market right now for, for music, but we'll keep you in mind from there. The stats, like if you look at your, um, your stats on your plays, it shot up thousands and thousands and thousands and one day, just, just because they said something, you know, and then they, I mean, mm -hmm. they declined, but just because they took the time to say something, there, there are many fans and followers got the that exposure. love the game, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it just went crazy through the roof. So that's, that's why I say, like, uh, Twitter <laughs> and Twitter's where is that? And like, I keep doing that same thing, man. Um, I, I made an Apex Legends track. I don't know if y'all heard of that game, Apex uh, Legends, yeah. Um, I made this one was uh, no samples at all, man. This is just all original, but I made it to sound like it's it's supposed to be in that game. It's supposed right. to be in that universe, you know. Um, I contacted some guy I don't even know. I was just on Twitter and say, "Hey, who who's good at playing guitars?" And then I got a few tags, and I just kind of messaged each one of those guys. So somebody hit me back, say, "Oh yeah, man, I'm I'm making this." I said, "You can you record?" He said, "Yeah." Me and him worked together and put the track together. He sent me all his his work. I mixed it, mastered, do it on Spotify. It's doing well right now, you know. I'm just gonna keep that same formula. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Um, yeah, that always, network. That's brilliant. Yeah, good networking. Um, also, you know, getting those features with other um artists out there, even other producers. Um, you know, it is a competition, but at the same time, you could. It's okay to work with other people. You know. Right. You don't want to take all mm -hmm. the clientele. Just let them know you ain't you ain't scared. You know to to work together. You know and create something um, because you're gonna get that much more exposure. You know their fans, your fans. Um, you know they they all gonna want to listen, and then you know my fans gonna listen to him and see what he's about and, and vice versa. So you know, look to Twitter, look for other artists, right? Um, get some good collabs going. Um, you know, same with podcasting, you know, you know, you in the group, you know, it could be other podcasters out there and you could have some similar, uh, 
subjects or something, and you could have like just one big special show or something. You never know, and then you know that may take off, or that may put in some more, some more followers, some more fans, and people that want to you know check you guys out, you know, from his side yep. and vice versa. So, right, um, yeah, never be afraid to do that because it, it helps, definitely helps. Man, that that's that that last the last track was was awesome. I mean, I already like I already liked your work. I, Obviously, you know, over about a year it, ago, yeah, man. Ben went to you and you created our intro, and I was I was blown away. I was I'm like, still processing it. I'm a, I don't know. I was yeah. already processing. I was like, yo, this shit. I've, yeah, I was shit. looking. I was looking at, at at the at the screen. You know how he had the software open. I was just waiting for the rest of it to hit. I'm like, here it comes because I see it all like, on. Like, I'm like, hold on a second. <laughs> you see the build up, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, man, that's awesome. That's awesome for it. Hopefully, you know some young old creator whomever that that's just getting into like creating and getting their their art out there hopefully they uh you know they they listen and they take something from it some inspiration some of the tips stuff that you put out there um and you continue to do your thing man uh hopefully you you blow up even more than you know the, the, that track was the beginning that you know it soared to thousands and thousands and hopefully you keep going man because yeah. you got it, it yeah i mean you, you got you got good work it's awesome so I hope nothing but the best, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Ben, I'm gonna let you yeah, have man. the last word because cause uh because you always do. So uh, yeah, I definitely <laughs> go do. for it. Yeah, man. Like uh listening, listening to that beat, man, and, and the work you've done, you know, I mean the work we've already done together and what what you created for the intro is always inspirational, man. Like I as a creative, me and John, right? Like John, I, I give John a hard time, but motherfuckers creative as shit. Like he can make websites, he's always like, man, try this, try that. Is why we've done like eight drift, eight different uh interfaces with like from OBS to StreamYard. Like being around other creative people, it makes it all the more intriguing and also inspirational. You know what I mean? So like that's why I wanted to have you on because I was like, how have I not had you on already to talk about this stuff? You know what I mean? Because I love I love talking to creative people, and like just that beat, I, I was vibing. Like I, I like I'm still processing like every part of that beat that you put that you put. I want to like check it out on YouTube and, and play it for my wife. I was like, yo, like that beat was like. Something like that little, that little like tapping, like that little click, click, that little click into it. That it was yeah. like yo, that shit was hitting. That was even, <laughs> that was even before the bass. So, hey man, oh we go, we go back uh, a long time, man. We're gonna have you on again, having you on and, and just throwing up that beat. That shit was absolute fire. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on to the podcast, man. And we're Thanks, definitely man. gonna I have you on again. Yeah, man, and Aunt, bro, like you, you said at the like when we talked yesterday, like oh man, I don't know, it's gonna be hard for me to talk to an hour. You did, you did great, man. It was just it's it's natural because we're just all a podcast is is a couple friends having a conversation. You know what yeah. I mean? It's not like we're not. It's not an it's not an interrogation. It's just it's just a recording of, of shit talking and learning something. You know what I mean? That's that's all it ever is. And for sure, don't drink too much when you're intermittent fasting. It's probably not the best yeah. idea. Lesson yeah. learned. <laughs> 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 lesson learned All right, man. again uh, and if you're watching us on youtube what you're about to hear is another ant beat on our uh on our outro and uh, thank you again so much for coming man we're out guys peace